All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the Boca Podcast. And actually, this is a special edition of the Boca Podcast, a series that we're doing, uh, which are actually brand position consultations, having conversations with individual photographers who are looking to refine or even create a brand position in their market. And uh, I am I have the wonderful privilege of being joined today by George Turner Bowman the Fourth, who, by the way, has the fanciest name I think that of, of any guest we've had in the podcast to date. Thanks for hanging out with us, George. Thank you for that, Nathan. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. No, I mean, it, it is actually quite impressive. Is there, tell, tell us, give us a little bit of background of the name, actually, because I know this plays into your brand as well. So, I mean, I guess the background of my name would be that it's just a family name that's been passed down for a very long time. Yeah. My dad, he wants to have more Georges than King Henry the Eighth or whatever. That's his <laughs> goal. So, Okay. Well, that that, so, yeah. that actually makes for a pretty interesting story. So I'm uh, I'm glad that I asked asked the question. <laughs> yeah. uh, how did you? I I know that you had mentioned to me before we started recording that that um, I, well, you've been listening to the podcast for a little bit, right? Yeah. So I actually started listening to the podcast from Henry Chin. Okay. You were on one of his podcasts, and I found you, and then I've just uh, soaked up the 350 plus episodes, and <laughs> probably. I don't know. I'd say two to three months. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That That is a it's, lot of content to consume in a really short amount of time. Well, I drive around a lot for work. Okay. So I have two jobs, basically. So I do my photography a lot. And then I have like a little backup job just in case anything, you know, crazy happens. Um, I can pick up hours if I need to. Sure. So I drive a lot. So I get to listen to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts and stuff like that. It really helps me out a lot. Well, I'm I'm glad that you found benefit and value in it, and I mean that's our primary goal at the end of the day. I, I don't I don't want to just be more noise in the marketplace, digital noise in the marketplace. Um, the goal is to to try to help photographers as much as possible. So I'm glad that you've you found benefit in that. And I mean, really, our position here, speaking of position statements, um, our position at the podcast is about helping photographers create sustainable businesses. Part of that effort, of course, has to do with our approach to marketing. And I think one of the most important pieces of the marketing puzzle is having a clear and distinct brand position. So we're going to talk about your brand position in just a couple of minutes, George. But just to give an introduction to those listening in who are not familiar with this concept and maybe are new to these brand position consultations, brand position by itself just means the value proposition that we offer to our marketplace. Now, hopefully it's a distinct brand position, a unique brand position that stands out from most other photographers. And the reason that I emphasize that is because I've, I've asked many photographers about their brand position statement or what makes them unique in their marketplace. And, and in many, if not most cases, I get very similar answers. Photographers have a tendency of just kind of rinsing and repeating or copying and pasting what other photographers are doing. And that's not helping us stand out amidst a very busy market. And so a clear and distinct brand position is that unique value proposition, which is actually unique. It's different than other photographers. And I mean, there are primary benefits of a brand position statement, a clear and distinct brand position statement. One is that it enables potential clients to immediately know our UVP, our unique value proposition. If we're doing that effectively, particularly on our website, it's front and center, big, bold text, clear and concise. We can read it in just a second or two, or a potential client can. And they immediately know what makes us different from the rest of the photographers. The second benefit is that it naturally filters out irrelevant potential clients. Uh, the third benefit is that it does simplify and focus our marketing efforts. Because if we're not juggling multiple messages, if we can focus on just one. That is going to simplify our efforts at creating any and all marketing content. And, uh, and then as a result, the fourth benefit, it encourages better time management. All of our efforts around building our brand can be focused on this one very specific, clear and distinct message. And the example that I always give uh, is if I, as a, as a photographer here in Chattanooga, and I actually shot weddings for over 10 years, but if I wanted to start a photography business again, and I established myself as a, a black and white wedding photographer for skateboarders, I immediately filter out irrelevant potential clients naturally. And if, especially if I put that front and center on my website and all of my marketing, but then all of my efforts in marketing, all of my time spent will be geared around building the brand that offers this very particular service. And naturally it will filter out all irrelevant activities. So that's kind of the, the primary benefits of a clear and distinct brand position. And, and so George, I want to come back to you and can I get an idea, first of all, of the marketplace that you're in? You're in Florida, is that correct? 
Correct. And whereabouts in, in Florida are you currently based? So it's a little town called Eustis, Florida. Okay. It's kind of right slap in the middle of everything, though. So I work in you know the Tampa market, the Orlando market. So there's a lot of markets that I work in. So I don't specialize in just one. Now, so is- I'm kind of like the whole state. The, the, okay, the whole state. And, you know, one of the things that makes the biggest difference when it comes to establishing a clear brand position is specificity, not just in the message, but then potentially also in the marketplace that we're working in. Is there a reason that you haven't kind of narrowed it down to one particular city per se? Or are you trying to keep your, your options open? What's the thought process there? Um, yeah, so I guess the thought process would be that it is my goal to travel and just go all over the state. Um, really the end goal is to be doing destination weddings because I love to travel so much. So I think just getting just clients all over the place is something that's interesting to me. Okay. So uh, that's interesting. And I actually, I, I think I missed that, that piece of your business model. You're, you're actually hoping in the long run to become a destination photographer. Now, does that mean that you want to go out of the country? Is it just mean like you want to go to a different state? What does that actually mean from your perspective? I mean, I would love to go out of the country. That would be great. And do like Indian weddings. I'm super interested in Indian weddings. I think they're the coolest things ever. So that would be something really cool. But uh, really anything in the country, just just to get out of the state, you know, and just do a destination wedding, maybe in like Oregon. I had one that I was doing out in Oregon, but it got postponed. So I was on the path. But sure, right now, sure. And, so. and you said that the, the motivation for doing weddings out of state is, is just for the sake, is it largely for the sake of travel? I mean, is there any type of Pretty specific much. business motivation behind it? Um, yeah, just travel. And okay. I, I don't know if you looked at my Instagram, but I do a lot of landscapes and traveling. So that would also add to that portfolio too. So. Yeah. And for anybody listening in, just to give context to the conversation, George mentioned his Instagram. If you go to GTBIV underscore photos, we'll link to it in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. Uh, you can actually see his Instagram there. And there is a, quite a nice mix of uh, certainly a lot of wedding photography, but then there's some also lands- some landscape and kind of architectural work in there as well. Is that something that you also wanted to get into professionally in the long run or more just a hobby, George? Um, yeah, the, the landscapes is how I got into photography. I, I just bought a camera and that's how I learned how to use it was just going around and doing landscapes and then I would edit them. And that's, that's just kind of how I got into the game. Okay. Um, and then eventually like somebody just asked me to take their photos one day and I, I did it and they came out really good and now I'm here. Wow. And how long ago was that? Probably about three years ago is when I bought my camera. So pretty recently. That's, that's wild. Wow. Well, congrats on, on already getting this far with it. And I mean, it seems as though you've learned pretty quickly as well, but let's actually get into a, a little bit more. I just want to understand a little bit more about your brand. And of course, give the insight to our listeners as well as we're walking them through what it means to develop a, a brand position. But talk to me about what you currently communicate to your potential clients about specialty. I mean, if I go to your website and for, again, for everybody listening in, gtbivphotos.com is the website. Uh, I'd land on the page and it says Florida wedding photography made affordable and stress-free. Is that the exact message that you're, you're communicating to your clients if you meet with them, for example, or is there something slightly different? Um, I also communicate with them that it's affordable, stress-free and fun. Okay. And I'm really laid back. So I try to communicate that I have seen, and just where I get it from is I've seen a lot of photographers, like I've worked for other photographers and some of them, they just don't like doing wedding photos. And a lot of them really, and I enjoy them and I love them so much. And I don't know, I just provide a different experience for my clients because I love what I do so much. I feel like. Okay. How do you get the impression that other photographers don't enjoy what they do? Cause it's actually an interesting point of conversation. I mean, you, you, you pointed out the difference and, and this is really important when we are coming up with a distinct brand position we're trying to communicate something that's different than other photographers. If we're observing certain behavior, we're observing certain messaging, we want to kind of go the opposite direction, right? So how, wh- right. how have you actually observed this? Well, I've done a few. I've second shot for somebody and I've done some style shoots at some wedding venues. Okay. And just the two photographers that I met and the one that I worked under and then the other that I worked with, I don't know, they just... They didn't enjoy weddings as much as I thought they should because I was coming into the game 
like, man, I'm so excited to be here. I can't believe you guys shoot weddings full time all the time. And they were like, uh, well, yeah, it is what it is kind of. Uh. And I was like, I mean, you guys should really appreciate what you guys have here. Like you guys are living my dream. So, <laughs> so it just made me appreciate it a little more sure. and to make sure that whenever I like you can get lost in what I like to call the rip current of business or life. And it's really easy to just be like, oh, this is just a, a job or income and get lost in what you're actually doing for people. And you, do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's I, like I do, the mundane. You can get lost in the mundane of a business pretty easily. It is it, that you definitely can. And that's honestly, it's a loaded topic, too. But I wonder, like, how, how long had these photographers been in business? Had they been shooting for a while? Yeah. So a couple uh, the two that I shot with, they had probably been shooting for like five to 10 years. That's just a guesstimate. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Well, I mean, when I think about a, and we'll talk more about specific messaging in just a bit, but when I think about the, I guess the feasibility of communicating that you love photography more than another photographer, that might be a, a difficult message for right. the average consumer to, to grasp, right? The assumption is that the person enjoys photography and trying to convince them otherwise that might be a bit of a stretch and may not feel as relevant to most potential brides or grooms um, as some other messages. But we can get into that in just a bit as we observe what some of your competitors are actually already saying. It'll be kind of an interesting study. Um, Mm -hmm. Would you say then that, I mean, you, you mentioned affordability, uh, you mentioned the fact that you that you enjoy the photography, actually enjoy it. And and that enables you, I guess, that create a more fun, kind of humor filled is, is the, the words that you use on your website, humor filled experience. Are there any other differentiating factors that you feel that you offer through your, your business? See, this is what you're here for, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when I, what I think I, I add, and, and you know, it's interesting that you say that because brand position, a lot of it is just observation of what right. already is and, and then figuring out how to effectively communicate that. That, that's a big part of it. So I think just because I haven't had the opportunity to observe your business in, port, in, in person, right. you might actually be able to lend a little bit of interesting perspective to this, and then we can kind of take it from there. Okay. So what I think differentiates me from the others is I care a whole lot. Okay. Um, my prices are affordable, and I am super funny, and I make the day just super fun and relaxed, and that's what differentiates me, I think. That I can explain to you yeah. off the top of my head right now. Yeah, which is very consistent with what you were saying earlier and, and what your website even communicates too. Now, mm-hmm. when, when you talk about affordability, this is an interesting conversation. And again, we'll we'll probably get into this further in just a bit. But what what does that mean to you? How do your prices compare to other photographers in the area? And how have you gotten a sense of those prices of the other photographers so that you know you are actually affordable and compared to others? So I have looked at what my competition charges. Okay. And I developed my prices to be pretty much like the bare minimum that I could make to make a living. So I'm not really making a whole lot off of it. And affordable is my my thing. It's a pretty loaded topic for me and I don't I don't want to say too much, but I think sometimes people charge a little bit too much for photography. And I guess my goal of the whole thing is to create like this giant wedding business um, and kind of change the market of how um, much wedding photographers charge. Wow. Well, I mean, I I think we should actually talk about it because that's an interesting kind of theory on a business model. And and actually, I I may have similar similar uh, opinions or a take on it. So explain just a little bit more what your thoughts are and kind of your your bigger picture or longer term goals as it relates to changing the way that that um, photography is priced. So really like my whole thing about affordable comes from just how I was raised. Okay. My mom was never able to afford uh, professional photos. I think I have like one professional photo done of me. Interesting. And that's it. And yeah. I, I grew up with like a single mother. So she didn't have time like money or time or anything like that to do uh, professional photos. Hmm. So with, with that being said, it kind of sets me on like a passion to give people photos. Like I think everybody deserves photos for an affordable price. Like 
I don't want to charge an arm and a leg for photos. And at the end of the day, me growing up like that, I had to work very hard to, to where I am right now. And photography isn't necessarily the hardest job that I've ever done. Like, I'm not trying to bash it because it is a hard job, but yeah. it's not if you love it so much. And that's what most of us do that are photographers. We love it so much. It's not even like work. We're just really making money on top of it. And if we can help people out with our images, then that's the number one thing I think we should do. Like, yes, we have a business and our bottom line matters um, and we have to make money. But some days, like if a customer comes to me and they, they, I give them my pricing and they can't afford it, sometimes I'll do it for free for them just because I don't want them to miss out on the opportunity of getting photos. You know what I mean? Oh, a hundred percent. And I mean, this is, I'm so glad that we went here and that you're willing to share because this is the kind of stuff that can make a really big impact in developing messaging. And it's actually a great segue to my next question, which has to do with the reasons you even started and run a photography business to, to begin with. If, if we build a brand and ultimately a brand position based on our personal experience, based on our personal story, it's going to have that much more meaning and ultimately give us that much more motivation on a daily basis to get up and to actually deliver on that brand position. You've got a really powerful story here. You, you grew up without a lot of money and you know what it's like to be in a position where you can't afford a professional photographer. So the fact that you want to give other people that opportunity, despite whatever their income might be, that's a really powerful message. And this is, this is something that we can run with. It's one thing to just simply say you're, affordable, you're an affordable photographer, because as we'll, we'll actually discover here in just a second, you're not the only one in the marketplace saying that, but mm-hmm. there might be a different way to communicate the idea that is more impactful, that is story driven. And, and, and that's where the significance of your backstory comes in. So I'm, I'm really glad that you shared that. Will you share some of the other reasons? Are, are there other reasons that, that led you to start a photography business in the first place beyond just delivering affordable wedding photography? That's a loaded topic, but I'll just say that I love it. And um, there's just, there's no better reward to me than taking a photo and editing it and just sharing it with the world and other people just seeing it and, you know, trying to inspire others with your photography. So, yeah, I guess I guess it was more of um, an outlet for me to communicate, inspire others yeah. or have people look at the world in a different way. That's why I got into landscapes is because, you know, nature really does help the mindset out a whole lot. And I like to share that with people and try to inspire them to do that and, you know, share a little quotes in there that really helped me out along in life to be successful hmm. so it's it's i use it to inspire people a lot with okay. my landscapes and then my wedding photography is just um basically geared towards helping couples with affordability and a stress-free experience and a fun day i, I love this and, I, and I'm, I'm i'm taking notes actually as, as you're talking here because I, I think we've got some some really good stuff to work with here and and by the way just to to i guess be relatable and and give a little more context to what i'm to the feedback that i'm giving you i i grew up in a family that didn't have a lot of money um my parents when when i got married to to my ex this is a number of years ago wow i guess it, like 20 years ago it's kind of crazy they paid 600 dollars for the wedding photographer and mm-hmm. that was a lot of money for them um, right. And which is kind of ironic because I ended up becoming a wedding photographer who charges as much as $10,000 for uh-huh. wedding photography. But I know what it's like to be in a position where like it's actually way more of the country than I think most photographers want to acknowledge where you, they, you know, they may make somebody might make 30 grand a year or maybe 40 grand a year. And the idea of spending five grand or eight grand or 10 grand on a wedding photographer is just not even a point of consideration for them because they simply can't afford it. You know, we spend a lot of time in the photography industry talking about the significance of the art of a photography and, and how it's worth investing in because it's the one thing that lasts for your, from your weddings and, and on and on and on and on. And it's really convenient for photographers to talk about that. But the reality, again, is that a, a very significant percentage of our our country is only making, let's just say, thirty between thirty and forty grand a year. And if that's the case, and you only have so much money in the bank, then it's just not a consideration to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for wedding photography. So somebody has to serve that market. And I love the fact that you, unlike I think a lot of photographers at, at this point in our industry, are actually owning that idea and you're trying to figure out how to deliver on it. 
And again, I think that the backstory is really powerful. I think the reasoning is really powerful. And so coming up with a message that is a reflection of of that, I don't think will be altogether too challenging. And we'll get to more of those potential ideas here in just a little bit. But I really appreciate you sharing the backstory. And just to give you a little bit more context, again, for our conversation, George, but also for our listeners, um, I asked you a similar question actually leading up to our conversation today about the top one to three reasons that you started and run a photography business. And you said to do something I loved, also not to, to not have anyone telling me what to do. So you get to be your own boss, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. which is totally understandable. And then also to to for, for the sake of purpose, to give yourself a purpose, which you've kind of spoken to along the way. And the reason why I ask for everybody listening and the reason why I ask these questions is, again, because if we develop a business model that is rooted in our personal values, the things most important to us that we find most fulfilling, then that will enable us to create a more powerful brand. And it will also, especially when it comes to the messaging, because it's very specific, it's a reflection of our personal experience, but it will also enable us to create a more sustainable business. Because again, we're getting up on a daily basis with a a position statement that's really rooted in a mission, right? Which in your case, George, I think again, is a very powerful one, which is to to provide wedding photography to to any and everyone, not just the people that that make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a year that can afford a $10,000 photographer. And Mm -hmm. I think that mission statement is a really powerful one, but let's actually, let's kind of compare and contrast. So right now on your website, I see Florida wedding photography made affordable and stress-free. And, and I want to kind of compare and contrast that with your competition, because it's really important in the process of coming up with a, a, a brand position statement. I mentioned earlier the significance of being unique or distinct to, to look at the competition, to see what they're saying so that the messaging isn't too similar so that we create some distinction, some contrast. And um, so I did a search, I actually did a couple of searches. Uh, the first one that I did was for cen- Central Florida wedding photographers, because, I mean, as you mentioned, you're, you're working in kind of this broader area. And here are some of the, the position statements that I found on these various wedding photographers or photographers' websites. And of course, I'm not going to call out any names here. I just want to share messaging so that we can figure out a way to contrast or stand in distinction to it. But um, in that Google search, and this is in the first, I think, three pages of Google search results from Central Florida wedding photographers, uh, here's some of the messaging. For those who believe a single photograph can enthuse a deep connection. Another one was traveling photographers based in Central Florida. Another one said wedding and commercial photographers with experience. Another said capturing the most important moments in life. Uh, another one, and, and I've mentioned this before, is something that's been popular over the years with photographers is to have three words to represent your brand. Of course, the challenge with that is juggling multiple messages. But this particular photographer had explore, discover, connect, and then said your storytelling. Another person said kick-ass Orlando wedding photography and videography for fun-loving couples. Um, another said a curated collection of authentic in-between moments that are timeless to look back upon. Uh, another said Orlando wedding photographers who live to travel to tell your love stories from elopements and destination weddings worldwide. Another said Orlando, Florida's premier husband and wife wedding photographers. And just a few more. Um, and this this is where you're, you're starting to run into a bit of competition. But this person said affordable Orlando wedding photographers. And by the way, they didn't actually say this the way that you are kind of front and center on the website, but it was mm-hmm. in the SEO. And um, right. when I did the Google search, I could see it pop up in, in the search results there in the subtext of their their listing. Uh, another one said best event photography in Orlando, Florida, highest standard in customer service and entertainment. And then the last one was remember how your wedding day felt. And then we focus on experience. So I'm sharing all these, not because they're necessarily great examples of brand position statements, but I just want to kind of create some awareness, George, of, of what you're mm-hmm. competing against. Any initial thoughts hearing those? Yeah, I guess my initial thought um, from all that being said is that they don't have the greatest brand positions. And and from your perspective, what what keeps them from being very strong? They just, uh, it's mostly just we're Central Florida wedding photographers. Yeah. That's like all they're saying, really. Yeah. And this is something that has really helped me listening to the Boca podcast and really reflecting on my brand position. And I've, I've watched this like since I implemented a brand position, I have everything front and center, pretty much just like you described, Nathan. I, I really uh, got mostly everything from you. And I read um, Start With Why and a couple books that really helped me figure out why I do what I do. Um, and I sell with that. 
And I have seen the sales go up from whenever I didn't have a brand position hmm. to now. And they went up about 200% um, in the first you know, a week of me changing this and sharing this uh, wow. website with everybody. But with the coronavirus hitting, it has been a little different lately. Sure. But understandably, yeah. well, again, I'm glad that you found value in that. And I think, I think we're, we're we're really in the position of doing here is not so much coming up with a brand new position statement for you as much as maybe just potentially refining it. Because right. although, in, at least in the Orlando market, you don't have anybody who has positioned themselves clearly with regards to affordable wedding photography. There is that one photographer who has it kind of built into their SEO. And, and if you dig into their pricing, it's, it's in a similar price range as yours. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so there's potential competition there, but just to give a little bit more context, I went ahead also and just did a Google search for affordable central Florida wedding photographers, because that's a word that you're using. So it makes sense to do a search and to see if anybody else is playing in that realm. The first option, the first result that I got that actually was a clear result was wedding photographer from just $350, which is, I mean, kind of mind blowing to think about. In fact, that I think that's the exact amount that I charged for um, wedding photography. When I first started the very first wedding that I ever photographed, I lost money because I was shooting film and had that, that <laughs> film developed, but, but that was the amount that I charged. But Here's here's the crazy thing. It's, as much as that number seems ridiculous, and we all like know that none of us could actually make a living shooting for that little, that position statement stands out, right? Because mm-hmm. it is a message that literally nobody else is trying to communicate. So that's kind of interesting to me. The next result that came up was, let our photographers capture your wedding's most memorable moments. Uh, so it has nothing to do with w- affordable wedding photography. So no real competition there. Um, then the next one was the business that I mentioned earlier, who kind of has that that word built into SEO, uh, really not not front and center on the website. Next person again, that kick-ass Orlando wedding photography and videography for fun-loving couples. Uh, another result: bright, joyful, film-inspired wedding photography. Another one was documenting life. Uh, another was Orlando, Florida's premier husband and wife wedding photographers. Another was remember how your wedding day felt. We focus on experience that we, we saw that earlier as well. So there are really only two other competitors, shall we say, that are playing in that space, that affordable space, at least from these initial two searches that you have to kind of think about with regards to your messaging. And actually, I did one other search to affordable Tampa, Florida wedding photographers. And there was there was one that popped up. And their messaging said, we are your affordable Tampa area wedding photographers. We believe every couple should have quality, affordable wedding photographs. Now that plays along the same lines as what we were talking about. So again, a bit of competition there. And then another result said real weddings, real good times. So a few people that are playing in that space. So really that I I think, first of all, knowing that there is, and I've shared this, this statistic before on air, um, and I saw this at, from, from weddingreport.com, between 70 and 80% of weddings photographed in the U.S. are shot for two, two grand and below. And, and yet, we have all these photographers that are just clamoring to, to shoot you know, $5,000, $8,000, $10,000 weddings. And not a lot of photographers actively trying to serve that 70 or 80%. So there's plenty of space for you to play in that affordable market, if you will. But... The, the caveat is that you have to come up with messaging that is actually distinct. Um, and that'll mm-hmm. be kind of the, the challenge for us. But do you have any additional thoughts after me sharing those, those additional uh, potential competitors as far as the messaging goes? Not really. Um, I would like to hear what, what you, what you think I should possibly do, because I think I have pretty good messaging on my website at the moment to kind of, you know, be a little different from them. So uh, I think they're all very, very basic uh, brand positions that they have, and they don't have very strong brand positions. And that's why I'm seeing a lot of increase in sales, because I do have that. And I think one of the biggest differences that or what may have made one of the biggest differences, and you tell me, maybe you actually got feedback from some of these people that were reaching out to you when you started booking more readily. Um, but you have your messaging front and center on your website. I mean, literally, when I go to gtbivphotos.com, the first thing that comes up I mean, is, is a, a beautiful image. And then that big text that says Florida wedding photography made affordable and stress-free. You have some additional subtext there. Um, I will go ahead and throw this, this suggestion out there for you, George, which is um, 
as you're continuing to kind of refine not just the messaging, but even the look and feel of your website, I would try to figure out how to to avoid having to lay the text over the top of the subjects in your image. So the goal would be to try to find an image that has a lot more negative space built into it and where the subjects mm-hmm. are on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the image so that you can put the text in there in a way that's visible and it's not running um, into or amidst, if you will, the, the photo that is there on the page because that white text is getting lost a little bit in the photo. Um, mm-hmm. So I would, I would recommend looking for, let's just go through your portfolio and see if you can't find an image that has a lot more negative space in it where you can put that message, where you can put that text, and then it'll stand out even more and it won't conflict with or get in the way of that potential client being able to also see your images. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sure. I will, I will definitely do that. And and we'll talk a little bit more about your website here in just a second, but I, let's get back to the messaging piece of this because the, the idea of affordable has been used, or this word affordable has been used uh, a number of times already from your competitors. If we even just go into, I've mentioned before, powerthesaurus.org is a site that I, I find kind of interesting as far as a thesaurus is concerned. But affordable, if I type in affordable there in a power thesaurus, uh, cheap comes up. I, I, cheap is is too trite a word, not a not a one that I'm going to recommend that we even try using. Right, yeah. Um, low cost, inexpensive cost-effective, reasonable, um, and some other words, cost, price, affordability, accessible is an interesting one, low cost, mm-hmm. reasonable cost, low price, available, cheaper, reasonably priced, and so on and so forth. Not quite as strong as we continue to go down the list. Budget is a word that comes up. And you know, if, in order to avoid using the word affordable, you might even be able to say budget-friendly. But mm-hmm. I think what would be really interesting You might put something like budget friendly in subtext, but what might be really interesting is to focus on the the message that is brought by your story. And if if as when they land on your website, if it said right there in big bold text, everyone deserves wedding photos, and then in and then in subtext said budget friendly uh, photography or budget friendly wedding photography for, and then you name that marketplace. I think you could keep it as simple as that. And then what I would suggest doing is is further building on that idea. I mean, take advantage, not right front and center. I mean, if they scroll down further down the site or if you have an about section where you just briefly, and the emphasis on briefly there, but briefly share the backstory, which is that I grew up in a family that didn't have, you know, with a single mother who didn't have a lot of money, we couldn't afford photos. And I want to make sure that I give everything any and everyone, the opportunity to be able to have professional photography. Now, if Mm -hmm. that's wedding specific, then then you adjust the messaging accordingly. If it's photography in general, then again, you adjust the messaging accordingly. Specificity, I think is still really, really important for the sake of narrowing down and, and focusing your message and ultimately standing out more effectively. But this message is so strong that you could potentially Mm -hmm. run on that message as a platform and not only offer wedding photography, but portrait photography as well. Yeah, and I did play around with that in the past. Okay. Um, and it was just getting kind of lost. I probably just didn't word it properly. And the way that you're you're laying it down for me is really being very helpful with how to organize that. It's hard to make somebody the hero of their own story and also bring in your story. So that's kind of been the hardest thing for me is to tell them how I make their day better and mm. then also throw in like a little bit of you know, my backstory, because I do know that it is a bit of a great story and everything. It's just hard to work it in there. Well, and again, it doesn't have to be front and center per se. Um, Mm -hmm. It's, it's ultimately, and I've mentioned this before on, on the podcast, but there is a difference between a mission statement and a position statement, the mission statement. um, And and this is really an idea that I initially kind of got from, or the distinction that I got from a blog post that I read some time ago. And I'll see if I can pull this up while I'm talking so I can reference it clearly. But there was, there was this blog post where the, the author was talking specifically about the distinction or the difference between, and actually it looks like I've got it right here, Jason Brewer. Um, and, and he wrote this post uh, for Brolic.com, B-R-O-L-I-K.com. We can link to it in the show notes at bookapodcast.com. Uh, he actually said, they don't care about you. Yeah, this is a quote from his article. They don't care about your grand vision for the world unless that vision somehow improves their life or their bank account. 
And so there is a distinction between the mission statement and the position statement. The mission statement is the, the big why, the underlying why behind why we do what we do. You've got that story, George, and it's a really powerful one. I think you can sh- share that either really briefly as they scroll down the homepage or just put it on the about section. Um, I would encourage you actually to, th- to think about really building, fully building out your homepage around this idea of providing photography for everyone. So you could, you know, you have the messaging there on the on, on the header with a really beautiful image with some negative space. So you've got room for the text that says something to the effect of everyone deserves. If we're going to run with wedding photography, everyone deserves wedding photography. And then budget-friendly photography for you know Tampa couples or Central Florida couples or something to that effect. But then they mm-hmm. scroll down and they briefly they see a you know a simple one paragraph story with your maybe that one professional photo that you have from your childhood that your mom was able to afford. You put that photo there right next to it, some text that says, "I grew up in a single with, with a single mother who did everything she could to take care of me, but." couldn't afford a professional photographer. This is the one professional photo that I have from my childhood. I want to make sure that everyone who wants professional photography can have access to it and and just keep it at that. You don't need to go on for paragraphs and paragraphs of information. And Mm -hmm. then you could further build on this idea. I mean, depending on how much this means to you and how much time you want to put into it, maybe you even start a nonprofit or, you know, a charity of sorts uh, or even just a way, you figure out a way that your business can can give to your community and provide at no cost photography to a limited number of, of people who just simply, like realistically can't afford it. Um, you look for an, an outlet, an opportunity to do that. And, and you have information about that there on the homepage too. So your whole brand, everything that you do is geared around this one idea of making sure that everyone has access to professional photography. The, the messaging is there, but literally everything you do in your business backs it up. And that's when this becomes really powerful because it's one thing to come up with pretty words, which frankly, a lot of photographers attempt, at least attempt to do. It's another thing to actually back it up with the, the complete experience being a complete reflection of those words. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's genius. So I, I think that's kind of the direction that you could go with this. Now, it, whether mm-hmm. that, you know, as far as the exact wording is concerned, I think doing a little bit more research um, and, and some brainstorming around the verbiage of, you know, what, what, do you use budget friendly? Do you use cost effective? And maybe doing a little bit more Google searching in your marketplace just to make sure that nobody else is using that particular phrase or that set of words. Mm-hmm. Um, putting that in the subtext is good, but everyone deserves photos or everyone deserves professional wedding photography, leading with that statement, adding some subtext, referencing the budget friendly or cost effective photography. Um, and, and, you know, then potentially even a CTA call to action, learn more about my prices or see my prices here. And it takes them right. directly to the pricing right underneath that with a, with a very obvious button. That might be a really great place to start. So do you think, um, for my website that I should take out, it says Florida wedding photography made affordable and stress-free and, and take that out and then just put everyone deserves wedding photo- photography. Yeah, honestly, I think you could really, and then of course they're, they're going to see that statement. They're going to be like, well, yeah, of course. Some may say, of course, others might be, right. oh, oh man, I, I like they wanted a little bit, you're giving a little bit more context to it, I guess, ultimately with the subtext, which is budget friendly or cost effective wedding photography for you know, central Florida couples or for Florida couples or Tampa couples. Um, I, I, I still think that specificity is the way to go. And if you, I understand that you want to eventually do more destination photography, but for the time being, what you're trying to do is build up an existing business. And so my suggestion would be pick a market and go there and go strong and own it. Um, you know, and there's already somebody playing in the Orlando and I guess even in the Tampa market with that messaging or similar mar- messaging and and at least with that one business, similar price point. So do you go to that market and compete against them? Well, I think there's plenty of business to go around. So potentially. Right. Or right. do you look for the next biggest market and go there and just own that market and that message in that market and just take it over? So that, you know, they know George Turner Bohm and the fourth, the key, this is the guy you go to if, if you simply don't have the money to go elsewhere. And I think that's something to be proud of. A lot of photographers, they, they let their egos get in the way too much with right. this, this whole price thing. 
I understand pricing for the sake of building a sustainable business. And that is a whole conversation in of itself because it's an important one to have even when it comes to offering affordable photography. You have to figure out how to scale that effort because you don't want to burn yourself out shooting you know, 100 weddings a year in order to make ends meet. But at the same time, there is a market for it and it has nothing to do with how good a photographer you are. It's, it's serving a marketplace that has a massive hole in it, which is wedding photography for people who can only afford a $1,000 wedding photographer or a $1,500 wedding photographer. That's an actual need, and you're serving that need, and that's being an intelligent business owner, not somebody who's not good enough. Right, and that's, that's kind of why I do it as well, because I did see that there was a hole in the market for that, so I just put myself in that hole, and it's, it served me pretty well. And I would recommend doing that, but like doubling down. So you're, you're working on refining your messaging now. I would, again, I would work on, on finding a, an image there for the header because you've done such a great job of making that messaging front and center there at the top of the page, but it's that the text is getting lost a little bit in the image. Um, so right. I would just find something that, that is, that, that has a bit more negative space where you can put that text and that call to action. Um, the same thing both for your, your mobile site as well as the desktop site. And that mm-hmm. will allow you to, to further clarify and make even more an impact with that messaging. And I, th- I think it's going to be a really cool thing for you to be able to run on that um, moving right. forward. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And I wrote that all down so I can implement it. I appreciate the, all that. Do you think for the website that I should take down the book now button and just put pricing there as my call to action? Because I mean, if you do scroll down, yeah, my I have my pricing and everything like on my homepage. So I don't know if I should put that there or sh- should I keep the book now button there. But I mean, if they're going to the website, they're going to want pricing before they book. So if you just put pricing there and then I put like a call to action on the pricing page, that might be better. Well, you know, there is I, I know that um arguments can be made in both directions. When I, one of the other notes, or I made some notes as well about navigation on your site, because right now the navigation is you have home and then you have galleries, contact booking, a pricing message now on Facebook. And then you have a more with a drop down for wedding contract, wedding questionnaire reviews, portrait photography contract. Um, my suggestion would be to, well, a couple of different things. So in answer to your question, first of all, let that call to action, that button there be see pricing now. Mm-hmm. or something comparable and and see and this is going to be really insightful actually if you're if you do you have google analytics plugged into your site i don't okay. i don't have that yet so i'd highly recommend go ahead and make the changes and and simultaneously get google analytics analytics plugged into your site so that you can begin to see client behavior um, how they're navigating your site. If, if you have really clear messaging and a clear call to action, they're like, oh, this messaging resonates with me. I do want to know more. I'm going to click here because I want to see that pricing. Um, then that'll give you a feel for, or, or if they land in your home site, they never click on that button. You'll get an idea too of whether or not that messaging might be effective enough based on your marketing efforts. I mean, there, there are a number of variables at play there, but just simply being able to see how the potential client is navigating your site and how effective your messaging and your calls to action are as they relate to you know any ad campaigns, for example, that you might be running, which at, at this price point um, is actually, a, it's, it's a whole different conversation, but I'd actually highly recommend experimenting as the market opens back up again after we get out of um, COVID. I would actually experiment with with Facebook marketing because there's an opportunity to play in this particular income bracket really effectively, I think, with Facebook marketing as well. So if, if you do that and you see them hitting that Facebook ad, they land on your site, the messaging reflects the Facebook ad, it still resonates, it further resonates with them, they click on that call to, that call to action, which in this case would be view pricing now, it takes them to the pricing page, and then you you design specific calls to action on the pricing page so that you can further see their behavior. I think that's going to be the more intelligent way to go in this case. But I agree with you. To, to further elaborate on that, right now on the website, if I scroll down, again, a really strong effort as far as the header is concerned, but it kind of falls off from there because you have a lot of text in this kind of, it's almost like an about section. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the text is kind of laid over the top of you, so I can't really even see you actually. And it's a right, lot of that's- text. Yeah, and that's on the uh, the desktop version. Okay. On the mobile version, it looks good. But I do agree with you uh, with what you're saying. I 
I tried my best to get my face in there with the text over me on the desktop version, but on the mobile version, it's just a photo and then all the text is underneath. And let's be honest, everybody is shopping on their phones these days. Oh, it's like true. the only people that use computers are us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, well, we definitely have to plan for both. And so what right. I would suggest in this case is you have that that header, again, a, a different image with more negative space. You put the messaging there, the call to action um, to, to see pricing. But then you might, you know, and, and if you're using an image with negative space, you're going to have the text and the call to action over to the right or to the left. Um, mm-hmm. What you might have just above the fold is a, a little arrow. And right above that arrow it says has some text that says, learn more about our about my mission. And then they, right. they hit that or they just scroll down. And the next section where you currently have that, there's a lot of about, I mean, there's a lot of text. It's kind of overwhelming. So you're going to want to narrow it down or, or minimize the amount of text. But where you have a really simple picture of yourself and right next to that in, in some white space is that text that I suggested earlier. So now they are able to put together the story with the message. And again, okay. I, I would suggest another call to action right there. You always want to give them something to do next, guide them in the right direction. And then I would actually remove the pricing from this page because you're going to send them to a separate page and you want to get an idea of how your clients are navigating your site. So I wouldn't even bother with putting the pricing on this page. They get the message, they get the story, and then you give them very clear calls to action so you can track the progress on your website. Okay. I'm writing this down at the moment. Yeah, no, that's that's great. And if I can, if I can just make one or two other suggestions too, just for simplifying navigation and the user experience on the site. Um, right now, you've got contact to booking. Or excuse me, you have galleries, but then you have contact and booking, and then pricing, and then message now on Facebook, and then the more section. I would suggest um, just have contact as its own navigation. Pricing, it's already there, so you've got that. That's good. Galleries is good. Message now on Facebook is kind of repetitive because you're already asking them to contact you. So if you want them to contact you on Facebook or you want them to use your contact form, however you want them to contact you, put that information on the contact page okay. and, and don't overwhelm them because right now I go to the contact page and there is, they've got a phone number and then an email and then Instagram and then Facebook, not overly complicated, but then underneath that they have the contact form. So it's like, well, do you want me to contact you on the contact form or do you want me to do it through Facebook or the phone? Make it easy for them right. to understand what they need right, to do next yeah. by kind of minimizing the number of choices that they have to make. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. I would actually remove that more drop down because most of those things aren't relevant to the person who is just initially trying to learn about you. You can mm-hmm. send them the wedding contract later or the questionnaire and this kind of thing. Um, and it's just, it becomes busier than necessary on the site having that navigation there. So I would just take that off. Keep it simple. Give them galleries, pricing, and contact. Make it really, really easy to navigate the site. Yeah, I agree with you on that. The only reason I keep the wedding contract and the wedding questionnaire up there is because it's just so easy to get to for my my brides and grooms. It simplifies their life, I feel like, a little bit because I'm like, it's always there on the website. But I mean, I do email it to them. So I do see what you're saying that I could take that down for sure. Yeah, because again, it's not relevant to everyone and you don't want right. to give them more to look at than they actually need to. Yeah, um, be, mm-hmm. we are like we live in a really busy world, right? So the last I, thing that yeah. we need or in a noisy world at that. So the last thing that we need is to 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 add one more layer of navigation or of information that they don't need in the moment. You want them focused on your message and then learning how that pricing relates to the message and then contacting you so they can book you. Just keep it really, really focused on on those steps. And, and I think you'll find even more effectiveness in, in the, the booking process with your potential clients. Okay. As far as the text that I have on my website, what do you think about that? I try to give them my why, and then I try to give them my how, like how I add value to them. Mm. And I try, you know, the uh, building a story brand book, Yes, I try to I'm working on that right now to um, try to make them the hero of their story. I'm actually going through building a story brand right now. Yeah. It's a book I'm reading. And a lot of this is also inspired by uh, Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. Yes. Um, and he, he always says, you start with your why and then you tell them how. You don't start with how you do it first. You tell them why and give them a, a good message. Um, so I would like your input on how I have that set up. Do you think it's just crazy? Cause I, I made the why bold and then I did how I add value to your wedding. And I think 
that is really good, but I don't know if people are actually reading it or not. Well, I, I, there are a couple of things. So as I mentioned earlier, the distinction between mission statement and position statement is quite significant in that the mission statements for us, the position statements for the client. And I'm mm-hmm. glad that you bring up Donald Miller's building a story brand. This is one that we've talked about a lot on the podcast and I can't recommend it enough to, to anybody listening in who's not read this yet. You need to, for the sake of building a more distinct brand and also brand message. Um, I love that you're going through it, George, but I don't think that you need to spend so much trying time trying to explain to them how you're making them the hero of the story. That's honestly the, the primary purpose of the brand position statement. So mm-hmm. when you say, and again, th- this may not be the exact wording that you ultimately use. If there's a way to refine it, then, then definitely do it. But if you say everyone deserves photos or everyone deserves wedding photos, budget-friendly wedding photography for whatever the, the location Tampa Bay Mm -hmm. couples, you are communicating the way that you're adding value. You're providing wedding photography for those who may not normally be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. So you've already communicated how you're adding value to their life. You don't need paragraphs of text in order to further elaborate on that. Now, the suggestion I made earlier, if they're curious about the story, the suggestion Mm -hmm. I made earlier is, you know, again, a little simple call to action, learn more about my mission And if they do scroll down, if you have one paragraph of text, not two or three, then actually some of the text on the desktop site is actually getting lost. It looks like the formatting is a little bit messed up, but it's getting lost there on the page or getting cut off. But all you need is one simple paragraph, black text against a white background with your image right next to that that space. And they can easily read it. It's not, it's not, the, the font's not too small. They don't have a lot to comb through. Um, I think that's more than enough. You don't need to spend paragraphs of text trying to communicate that idea to them. And again, if you're effectively designing that brand position statement, you've already explained to them how they're, they're going to have value as a result of interacting with your brand. Yeah. And a lot less words too, to keep their attention. So I definitely, yeah, I thank you. I appreciate all the help that you have done. I I got this all written down and I'm going to implement it as soon as we get off the phone, probably. Well, and if, and if I can help continue to help in any way possible, I'm, I'm absolutely glad to, um, there's, there's always, you know, as you, as you begin to make adjustments to your site, whether it's on a visual level or a messaging level there, you may realize, you know what, if I can, I can tweak this a little bit and it'll make it that much better. If you need further feedback, I'm glad to help. And for those of you listening in, um, it takes some time, take some of these principles, these ideas that we talked about today and go take a look at your website. Um, you know, do a, a brief Google search and, and look at first two or three Google pay or Google results uh, of your competition in your marketplace, at least be aware of what it is that they're saying so that you make sure your message is clear and distinct in comparison and in contrast. And it's really going to make a difference in your, your effort at promoting your brand. But George, I'm glad that you found value here. Thank you also for adding value to our community by letting them all listen in on the conversation. Remind our, all of our listeners one more time, actually, where they can follow you online, if you will. Um, yeah, my Instagram is GTB. IV photos. And then my website is just gtbivphotos.com. And my Facebook page is the same gtbivphotos. Cool. And we'll link to all that in the show notes. I actually have one more question for you here just as we close, just a closing thought. And if nothing else to be food for thought, maybe it's a larger or longer conversation for another time. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I know the significance of your name and, and the family history there. I'm wondering for the sake of ease of remembrance, if you will, for the sake right. of your, your business aim, have you considered doing something simple like George Turner Photography, um, both for the URL and the business name? Yeah, so that is actually something that's in the works right now. Cool. I do have a business partner, so that's that's kind of how I keep the prices low because okay. we're able to cover more weddings because there's two of us. Yes. So with that being said, me and him, we are working on creating a different brand name. Okay. Um, so I'll still have GTB IV photos always. And then we'll create what we're going to, what we're talking about. And nobody steal this that is listening in, <laughs> in Florida is yes. Weddings. And it's not taken yet in, in Florida. So yes, weddings is what we're, we're working on. And we think that's going to be a really great name. People are going to remember it. And I know that GTB IV photos is probably the worst name ever, but it is my initials and I think it looks cool and I've always wanted to make it. So uh, 
Um, it's kind of just for me. And well, you I still can, get business with it, so it's yeah. working, but I, it definitely could be better. I know that. Yeah, you can always maintain that. But yes, you said yes photos or yes? Yes, weddings. Oh, yes, weddings. Okay. And is that URL available? Yes. Perfect. Have mm. you already bought it? No, I have not. Oh, We're, my goodness. It's in the works. Go jump on that now. Yeah, before anybody gets that, because the, the fact that's even available is really, because that's actually a really compelling name. Is there a thought, what's the thought process behind Yes Weddings? Just yes. Yes is the, you say yes to us. You know what I mean? Interesting. It's kinda, it makes, it's just simple and easy to remember. Um, it's catchy um, and it probably makes you want to say yes. You know what I mean? It is. It's extremely catchy. I and mean, it may be kind of flipping it around the other way too. I mean, you could also look at it as, in a way you're saying yes to everyone who wants photos as well mm -hmm. you're it, right a lot of a lot of photographers and again understandably so there's nothing wrong with other business models where you're charging more i did it myself um and, right. I, and I work toward that a lot of photographers are saying no for the sake of working with a very specific in some cases higher end clientele you're saying yes we are available right. yes of course we can take care of you um, right. So there's another it's kind of playing on this idea. I man, I love it. But go grab that domain name before anybody <laughs> else does, because that's a really okay. cool domain name, too. And and I love that you're moving in that direction. I mean, it does. It enables scalability because at the price point that you're shooting, if you're going to continue to do that, one of the ways to make that feasible is by building a team over the long run. So I'm, I'm glad you're thinking that way already. If you have a more neutral name like that, it also enables you to have other photographers underneath. And now those those clients that are hiring you aren't just expecting one particular photographer. It enables you to have a team of photographers that are supporting them. So um, I think it's smart all the way around. Yeah, you've got to go get that domain name now. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, George, for doing this. And, and good luck. This is, this is I'm really excited for you. Yeah, man. And I'll, I'll be in touch and I'll let you I'll show you what I did. And I'll let you know how it worked out. I'd love that. And again, for everybody listening in, um, check out the show notes, bocapodcast.com. We'll link to George's sites, gtbiphotos.com. Instagram is gtbiv underscore photos. Um, send him a message, send him some encouragement. And uh, thanks once again for listening to the Boca Podcast. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you so much for listening to the Boca Podcast. Will you let us know what you thought by leaving a review of the podcast in the Apple Podcast app? And I'd love to hear from you personally with your thoughts about the podcast and suggestions about future topics and guests for the show. My email is nathan at photographersedit.com. The Boca Podcast is brought to you by Milu, the simplest way for photographers and coordinators to collaborate on shot lists and timelines for weddings, parties, and other amazing events. Visit milu, M-I-I-L-U dot com. This podcast is also brought to you by Photographer's Edit, custom image editing for the professional photographer. Visit photographersedit.com.